Welcome once again to the channel. I'm your host, I Obtain. Today we're going to take a look at both the deck and we're going to take a look at combinations that you could use within the event. So we're going to look first at the cards. Uh, the video is late, one day late, because yesterday I was really tired, so I didn't really have any time to make the video. So sorry about that. So this is Custodians of Faith. This is the ultimate form. Some of you may have it, some of you may not have it. Uh, sorry that I didn't give my verdict on it yesterday. I think it's a nice deck, but I don't think it's a really powerful deck and I don't think it's a deck that you should go chasing after. If you can craft it, if you haven't got the Arcane Killer, you can get it because you do get 900% bonus and it's unstoppable, so it's not really that bad. Let's look at the battle skill. It creates six Dark Power Gem sixes massively increase the drop rate of dark gems and it increased dark slayer attack by 40 percent which is not a lot simply because you've got the jailers they're they're thinking that you could add jailers to this deck and the deck could perform really really well however as i said before that uh, mixed affinity decks are not as powerful as they used to be before because of gem crush 2.0 so it's not going to be extremely powerful it also dispel one enemy buff and cleanses two debuff it can be reset okay so let's take a look at what actually resets it let's look at the second passive so the first passive actually creates four dark power gem sixes at the end not the beginning at the end of each turn what that means is your first turn when you populate the board for the first time you will not create these four power gem sixes you'll create them and on the turn after second passive which is irrepressible progress if you start the turn with five or more dark power gem fours or higher then refresh this era so it only refreshes this passive only refresh this card refreshing fills your hero's battle skill and it resets the cooldown and as i said this card is unstoppable not the deck the card is unstoppable so it, it's not affected by anything that affect your passive ability so the passive ability is basically unstoppable this is your master collection call sheila and sheila massively increases the drop rate of dark gems and increases dark slayer tap by 40 percent for one turn for a master collection card this is really a weak master collection card it does gem raining and increase your slayer attack by 40 percent i've seen much better the passive creates four power gem sixes at the end of each turn so each turn this card will spawn four power gem sixes that's all right for um say something like a commander event but for a slayer event this card strikes me as being really, really weak. Your Ultra Rare, however, is a bit better because it's got this, some of the same abilities as the Ultimate Form. The Battle Skill creates six Dark Power Gem Sixes. It dispels one enemy buff and it cleanses two debuff. It can be resets as well. It's got the irre irrepressible progress, which if you start the turn with five or more power gem fours, if they're higher, it refreshes and refill this card's battle skill. It's unstoppable. I'm not sure what on this is unstoppable properly. It's the battle skill. Yeah, the battle skill. So unstoppable means if you get hit with something like say power gem silence, your your deck is on your card is unstoppable you can still activate your skill it's it's passive will still work if you get hit with anything so it's a it's a really good that skill unstoppable is really really good i really like that particular skill you won't see done a lot of cards 
because in GVG that skill is really really impressive so that is a nice skill to have however looking at the deck the deck seems to me more of a commander deck rather than a slayer deck because in the slayer event you want to get the boss um, down as quickly as possible this looks like something that you would use probably in say a commander event on on the crusade maps it doesn't really strike me much as a slayer deck it the skill is interested interesting but it's not really for me it's not really a powerful deck it's not really an impressive deck but i do like certain skills that the deck itself possesses i've got 66 coins I have collected um, seven out of the eight from the event and I've got one more to collect that will give me 67 so I need approximately 17 more coins to craft the complete deck both the master collection card and the ultra rare there is a, a, there is a pack coming out tomorrow so there's a retro pack tomorrow and a retro pack Saturday, which will give me 12. So I need an extra five to actually craft the deck, but I'm not gonna craft this deck because I'm saving my coins to see the deck that we're gonna get for the slay event. So we have a light slay event that will be the event that takes us over the Christmas weekend. So it will start the deck will be released in the United Kingdom on the 23rd, which is a Wednesday. The, the deck normally comes out on a Wednesday in the United Kingdom. It comes out on the Tuesday in America. So we will get here 12 o'clock um, on 23rd of December, the light deck. And on the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, the event starts and it goes over the Christmas weekend. So. I'm looking to see if we're gonna get a really good deck and if Network is going to do anything for VIP for this Christmas season. Because I haven't seen a VIP event for quite some time, even though a lot of time the VIP events are absolute rubbish. Let's see what they do for us. Now, let's take a look at the support card. So this is a support card in Dr. Owen and this card is quite simple. It creates 10 dark gems and it heals for 2,500%, which is not much. The dark gems aren't much. This card is, as I said, a support card. Again, I would think if it actually created even five power gem ones, it would be far better. Let's look at the event card. So the event card, I've got one copy of the event card. The event card will increase Dark Slayer attack by 30%, one 10% less than the Master Collection card. And the passive ability creates three Dark Power Gem 4s at the end of each turn, which is okay. A bit more Power Gems would, would have been nice, but it is what it is. You're not really gonna compete very well using an event card and support cards anyway. Those days are long behind us. So I'm gonna go straight in and see exactly what I get from the six star collection. Uh, don't really need anything from the six star collection really, but I'll take, if I get Voodoo Queen, I'll take it. Whatever I get, I'll take it. So there you go, overloaded Bolivia, which is an old ultra rare, which is absolutely useless. So that is what it is. Let's take a look at my deck that I've been using so far so this is that i've been using i'm primarily focusing on my arcane killer cards primarily this one freedom fighter would love to take this card up to six pink star um this one Drac draconic scondrel this one actually destroys all non-dark gems and create four dark power gem fours plus one additional dark power gem fours for every five dark gem on the board it cleanses all debuff and it heals for 250% of self-recovery. 
per gem destroyed so it's it's quite a nice card it can be silenced though because the battle skill does create power gem so it can be um silenced by gem silence and power gem silence so this one regal revolutionaries this one creates five dark power gem tools plus one more per 100 in mortal killer intensity it also increases in mortal killers attack by 108 percent for one turn far more than the current um deck bonus it's got the passive whenever a battle skill that creates power gem is used it heals for two thousand percent of hero recovery it creates one more per dark per one more dark power gem one then upgrades four power gem by one level so this is not a bad card really like that card uh freedom fighters is a card that needs no introduction it's got um uh attack bonus on it so it creates two dark power gem fours three dark power gem twos and receive a bonus attack the bonus attack on this one is multiplied by five every three turns it creates four every four turns it creates two dark power gem twos and dispel one buff from the enemy so you've got one card to dispel debuffs except gem, power gem silence and gem silence and one to dispel buffs on the boss this one is the one that i'm using for the um, arcane killer skill it's really really old it's the first dark ultimate form ever so this is the first first dark uh, slayer ultimate form ever not the first dark ultimate form i think the commander dark ultimate form was before this one but it's the first dark slayer ultimate form that we had so it's really really old so we've got 400 percent uh killer bonus but that is okay the pitfall to this card however it requires 50 skill points before you can actually use the battle skill and the battle skill actually creates six dark power gem fours and three dark power gem twos then increase dark slayer attack by 25 percent. so i've got a lot of a lot of attack going on and we've got the pure store resistance which is high performance unit area which is going to increase the attack output of this card which is brilliant and this one but I'm primarily relying on the attack bonus from this one. Okay, so high performance unit area needs no introduction if you've been playing this game for a while. It's one of the cards that we were so dependent upon before Gem Crush 2.0. So this one will create three uh, power gems passively each time you attack and it will also create four dark gems it will become immune to damage for one turn which is really really good and it cleanses and it cleanses all debuff when you get hit though all debuff affecting your team will be cleansed when you get hit however it is affected by not toxin weaken i think it's affected by toxin and weaken because it does a heal and it boosts your skill so toxin affect this card because it heals and weaken affects it because it does a boost so those are the two things that actually affects this card it doesn't create any power gem with its battle skill which is really good so it's not affected by a power gem silence so i've got a lot of cleanse going on so this one will get rid of slumber it will get rid of power gem silence and this one will get rid of dodge so those two cards are the two cards that I'm going to use to get rid of Dodge, Power Gem Silence, and Slumber. So those two cards are really important to this combination. Okay, because if we take a look at the debuff and the buffs that the bosses, the bosses are running, you can see Dodge. So Freedom Fighter will get rid of Dodge. If you look at this one, Slumber, a performance unit area will get rid of that one quite sharpish and power gem silence doesn't affect high performance unit area absolutely brilliant so that's a really good combination so we're gonna go in 
haven't pay, played a lot because I'm just coming from work. Let's collect my keys and send out farming for a bit more keys. So what I've found is that my interest in the game has dropped quite sharply. So I haven't been playing a lot as I, how I used to play before. During events, I used to play like six to eight hours every day for the five days of the event. The last event I only play on the Thursday for two hours and on the Friday for one hour and that was it. I uh, didn't get relegated because there's not a lot of people actually playing the game anymore. So the game is losing its edge and I don't really think Network is quite interested to actually get people to start playing this game again because I've spoken about this as you can see I, don't, I can only see one boss on my screen only one boss because the screen is taken up with all of this garbage at the top I don't really need to see prestige all the time I don't need the, the, the friends account no clock every single person that actually plays this game knows exactly when there is frenzy we don't need to see that I don't need to see the prestige Put a tab somewhere up the top where we can touch it and go in and we can see the information yes i do need to see the um the guild score the top player score stuff like that i don't need to see the collection i don't need to see the ultimate the ultimate years this we don't really need to see we don't need it we don't need that tab and this tab it could be somewhere else but the screen is all taken up with all of that garbage at the top. And these are the things why I'm, I've lost a lot of interest in this game. Because network, it's just absolute garbage. Look, I can't see anything on my screen. I can't see absolutely nothing on my screen. Let's go ahead. We're going to use one key. We're going to see how this um, deck actually performs. If you've got these cards... You can you you can um, create a deck. You might not have the ultimate form that I've got because it's really old, but you might have the one that came out last year during the new dawn season. So with this deck, if the boss um, is a really strong boss, it's a three turn deck. Now what you need to do, you need to activate high performance unit area just before you get hit. Hopefully I can find a really strong boss so I can actually demonstrate. Okay, here we go. This one has got a bit more HP on it. So we're going to use three keys. So we need three turns to maximize the damage output of this deck. Simply because our performance unit area needs to be hit before she gives you the status. And secondly, we need to have enough skill points. For trailblazer to actually be able to use his battle skill so we will have enough skill points so there we go we have 76 skill points we're going to take the hit there we go we've got the status and we just activate everything from right to left we got loads of crush and we upgraded our power gems and let's see the damage output using three keys. So 22 trillion for Freedom Fighter, which is not too bad for three keys. That will be multiplied by five if we needed it. So that would give us over 100 trillion damage with his nuke. So that is not a bad combination. I did look at other combination, but that is the most effective combination that I could come up with. I mean, I could try and use Arcane Killer, but if I'm gonna use Arcane Killer in a Slayer setting, as you can see, I haven't got a lot of Arcane Killer cards. This one is the Ultra Rare, it, Umbra Rook. It doesn't really, it's not gonna perform really well because it's an old one so the skill is quite old I haven't got uh, either the ultimate form or the event card for this one 
So back then, during the New Dawn event, as I said, you only got the support card, main card, and the ultimate form. So I've only got this support card. I haven't got anything else from that particular event. That's the reason why I have to be relying primarily on transformed Trailblazer. So a lot of people out there might not have any Arcane Killer Ultimate Form, Dark Arcane Killer Ultimate Form, Slayer. So, or they could have this one because this one was one of the first set of cards that came out in the Proving Ground store. So a lot of people could have purchased it, but if you weren't playing at the time, you may might not have it. So Arcane Killer wise, I haven't really got anything when it comes to Arcane Killer and that's the reason why I opted for Immortal Killer because when it comes to Immortal Killer I've got um, a better collection far better collection so there is not a lot of choice when it comes to deck combination this week so it should be really interested let's tag this one before somebody kills it and then we chat a bit more about the game so as i said um the game is not improving much we tend to take one step forward and two step backwards in a lot of area the game is quite an expensive game if you're um, a spender because it, it will cost you a lot of money to play this game and that's primarily what this game is geared towards it's geared towards taking all your cash from your pocket so be very smart with your cash it's very difficult nowadays especially what's going on um, be smart with your gems and um, just use what you have enjoy the events I'm in the Kings League and I'm enjoying Kings League it's not as stressful as Legend League and it's not as stressful as um, Emperor League so if you're looking to enjoy the game drop down to a lower level if you're competitive by all means go up to the highest level but it's going to be very stressful and very costly to stay in the legend league so this is the only combination that i find that's really effective i did manage to get a main relic and a rare relic so i've got the ultimate relic and i've got two old ultimate relic so whenever the the packs come out on the saturday please try and get the ultimate relics from them if you can't afford the ultimate form try and get the ultimate relics it's worth it all right so that's all from me today i uh, will be changing a few things on the channel um going into the new year uh i will inform you guys as to what will be um changing i'll still do legendary but i'm trying to introduce uh, a lot more games to the channel primarily game game in spotlight i'm bringing back game in spotlight where each week i'll download a game i'll play through the game i'll give my feedback on the game so you guys can actually um get information and a lot of the mobile gaming games out there um there's one game that just came out it is on the nintendo it's on the Nintendo, I can't remember Nintendo what it's called. My daughter plays it, um, Jay. And I'll be um, getting that game, I'll play it, I'll preview it on the channel. And if you guys are interested to see more videos on that game, I will um, keep playing it. Until the next um, video, which probably will be next week when we get our Earth Commander deck. This is Acta Insane. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace, and enjoy the event. Bye for now.